Hey everybody, it's time for the Digital Daily Bible Study. And this is a big time because we're now going into double digits. That's right, we are on day 10 of our 28 day journey through the book of Acts. I'm so glad you tuned in. Go on ahead, read Acts chapter 10 before watching this. And now we're ready to dive into Acts chapter 10 together. I'm reading from the New Living Translation, but get yourself whatever version of the Bible makes sense to you. Acts chapter 10, the movement of Jesus is continuing to expand. Remember, Acts chapter 1 said Jesus was like, go reach people in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And the original followers of Christ, they wanted to stay in their holy huddle, what was comfortable. They were only sharing the good news of Christ with other Hebrews. And Acts chapter 10 is a game changer now because Jesus came to smash our labels. And here we go, Acts chapter 10 in Caesarea, which I've been to Caesarea, by the way. It is beautiful. It's right on the edge of the Mediterranean. There's ancient Roman ruins there. Paul was in prison there. So later in the Acts study, we'll get to Paul's imprisonment. Um, but yeah, here we go. In Caesarea, there lived a Roman army officer. So Rome is the giant army. They are king of the world, right? From Great Britain all the way down to India. It's the first time that humanity is united under one great government. How did they do it? Well, they had the biggest army and to pay that army, they taxed people. So the Hebrews do not like the Romans. They're getting taxed 80, 90%. You thought your IRS check was bad, but here we go. There's a Roman army officer named Cornelius. Fun fact, there's also a song by the newsboys from 10 years ago called Cornelius. And it's about this chapter. So Cornelius was a Roman army officer in Caesarea. He's living on the beach. And since he's a Roman army officer, he probably is in charge of 100 Roman soldiers. So Cornelius is a very powerful man. He's living the life. He's got the beach house, the salty air of the Mediterranean. I mean, he's living life large. And since he's the captain of the Italian regiment, I mean, he's the man. People want selfies taken with Cornelius. So verse two says this, even though he's powerful, he's also a devout man who feared the God of Israel. And, and that's pretty crazy. This must've been a secret devotion and honoring he had to the God of Israel because Roman officers are supposed to worship the Roman emperor Caesar. But this guy has a, a secret awe and honor in his heart, a devotion to the God of Israel. And his entire household also did. So as goes the leader of the household, so goes the leader. And that's true for Cornelius, and that's true for you, men. Uh, it continues on that Cornelius gave generously to charity and was a man who regularly prayed to God. So already what Luke is saying to us in these first verses of Acts chapter 10 explodes the categories and labels that the ancient Hebrews had. A Roman, those guys are horrible. They tax us. A Gentile, a non-Hebrew, they are untouchables. And yet what was it that Jesus had said to his disciples in Acts chapter 1? Take this message of God's explosive, reckless love. And don't just keep it here in Jerusalem. Take it to Judea, Samaria, Samaria, which are the half Jews, the half breeds, and then to the ends of the earth, to the Gentiles, the non-Jews. See, this message of wholeness and forgiveness and shalom, it's not just for one people, it's for all people. Jesus didn't come just for a couple of us. He came for all of us. And so Acts chapter 10, Cornelius is already seeking God. Remember Matthew 7 verse 7, ask, seek, knock. God is always close to those who pursue him. And he's obviously pursuing the ways of God. He's being generous. He's honoring God in his prayer life. And so now the, it switches over to Peter. Peter is the pastor of the Jerusalem church. Peter is ministering to the Hebrews who are turning to Christ. And Peter, he's taking a nap. He goes into a trance and God speaks to Peter in a supernatural way and basically says, hey, Peter, it's time to go to the ends of the earth. It's time to welcome the outsiders 
to join the insiders. That's the message of the gospel. Everyone's welcome. Nobody's perfect. And, and so Peter's not sure what to think of this, but uh, all of a sudden some people show up in verse 22, knock, knock, knock. And he opens the door and the people say, hey, we were sent by Cornelius, a Roman officer up in uh, Caesarea. He's got a beach house and you're not going to believe this, but he's a devout man who fears the God of Israel. He's well respected by all the Jews. And Peter, this is crazy, but a holy angel instructed Cornelius to send for you so that you can go to his house and give him a message. And so Peter's like, okay, this is crazy. I get to go to the Hollywood Hills to a great big dinner party. Um, you know, I, I don't feel like I've dressed for the occasion, but all right. So giddy up, he leaves from Joppa. It says at the, it says at the end of verse 23, Joppa. If you know your Old Testament, it's probably ringing a bell. Joppa, where have I heard of Joppa? Oh yeah, the story of Jonah. Remember Jonah gets swallowed by the great big fish, then he gets vomited out. I love that part of the story. Why was Jonah swallowed by a great big fish? Because Jonah was told to go to Nineveh to reach people for God. And Jonah was like, no way, I'm not going to Nineveh. Those people, they're outsiders. And so he ran away from God, which is funny because you can't outrun God. And so God sends the big fish that swallows up Jonah, right? All that. And by the end of the book, Jonah does go to Nineveh because when God has a purpose and a plan for your life, he'll get you there somehow, even if you're full of whale guts. But here's where I'm going with this. Where was it that Jonah tried to run away from God? Joppa. It's at Joppa that the prophet Jonah got on a ship and tried to run away from God's will for his life. And so here it is now in Joppa that God is now telling Peter, a second Jonah, to go to a second Nineveh. You're going to go to Caesarea, to the outsiders. And Peter could have freaked out and been like, no way, God. No, I don't, I, I'm much more comfortable in my home base but Peter doesn't pull a Jonah. Peter obeys God's call on his life, even though it doesn't make sense, even though it's uncomfortable, even though it means going someplace that he's never been before. Because where in the Bible does God call us to do things that are comfortable? No, God always calls us to trust him and to obey him. In church world, we call that faith. And because Peter took God at his word. He was able to undo the curse of Jonah in Joppa. He heads up to Caesarea, meets Cornelius, an outsider, a Roman officer, a Gentile. And Peter's like, well, you know what? I'm going to tell you about Jesus. And so in verse 34, Peter says, I see very clearly now that God doesn't show partiality. In every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. So the message of Jesus is for everyone, not just for a couple of us church people. It's for everyone, for the librarian, for the, the person you sit next to in class, for the barista at Starbucks. Every person you lay eyes on today is a person that God loves and Jesus died for. And your mission field is right before you, the Great Lakes Bay region. Are you willing to leave Joppa and be a Peter? Or are you gonna use Joppa to run away from God's will for your life and pull a Jonah? And so then Peter continues, verse 36, I'm sure you've heard about the good news for the people of Israel, that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord and master of all. And you know what happened throughout all of Judea, beginning in Galilee, when John the Baptist was preaching. And now you've heard that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. There's that word dunamis, explosive power. And verse 39, we are witnesses of of all that Jesus did in Israel, in Jerusalem. He was put to death by crucifixion, but God raised him to life three days later and God allowed him to appear not to the general public, but to us whom God had chosen beforehand to be his witnesses. You realize you're chosen. Like seriously, if you're watching the digital daily Bible study and you've made it to day 10, seriously, God has his hand on your life. 
You've been chosen for something bigger than yourself. You are invited to be part of this movement called Life Church. And you get to link arms and partner with us as a Life Church family to reach Midland and Saginaw and Bay City. And to, like Peter, take steps of faith even when it doesn't make, make sense. He says, listen, verse 42, Jesus ordered us to preach everywhere and to testify that Jesus is ordained of God. And so Peter said all these things in verse 44, and then the Holy Spirit fell upon all who had heard the message. And Peter was amazed that Cornelius and his household, these Roman Gentile outsiders, were now becoming insiders. That the same Spirit of God that takes up residence within us is the same God who can take up residence in the lives of your neighbors and friends here in the Great Lakes Bay region. God cannot be contained. Smash the labels, smash the small box you've placed God into, and open your eyes to the mission field, the opportunity before you. Now, you're not being called to stand on the preach corner and start preaching. That's not the game here. But you are invited to pray for this region, to roll up your sleeves and serve. It is so easy to serve. We have guests coming through our doors every single weekend. Every Sunday is someone's first Sunday. And you could be a pioneer in Bay City. Go to lifechurchmichigan.com slash Bay City and you can sign up to start serving now. We're going to flip a movie theater this June and July. It's all hands on deck. We need your help. Maybe God's calling you to start serving on Sundays in Saginaw or Midland. We can make that happen. You just got to be willing like Peter was willing and then you get to see the miracle of changed lives. Peter asked in verse 47, who can object to their being baptized? Obviously God has done something in their lives. Let's celebrate. And so when we celebrate baptisms at Life Church, that is the reward we get from volunteering and serving and giving generously and inviting Seeing lives transformed by God's grace. That's the name of the game, people. And in Acts chapter 10, Jesus opens the doors and says, anyone, regardless of tribe, nationality, regardless of their background, everyone's welcome. Nobody's perfect. Now it's our job to invite people to discover what we've discovered at Life Church Midland, Life Church Saginaw, and this fall at Life Church Bay City. Won't you join us? and being part of the miracle, just as Peter experienced with Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. Love you guys. Tomorrow we're in chapter 11. We'll see you then.